In the history of life on Earth, extinction wasn't always noble. Sometimes it was absurd. A flying reptile impaled by a plant. A rhino roasted alive in a volcanic storm. A herd of giant sloths that drowned in their own filth. These are not just fossils. They're frozen crime scenes. Snapshots of life's cruelest coincidences. Proof that evolution has always had a wicked sense of irony. Every fossil is a story. Not of how something lived, but how it ended. A moment of chaos, captured forever in rock. Paleontologists call it taphonomy, the study of what happens after death. But sometimes, what's preserved isn't decay, it's drama. From frogs that love themselves to death, to a prehistoric family wiped out overnight. These are nine of the strangest and most ridiculous deaths ever discovered in stone. Before we begin, step into the forgotten ages of our planet. And make sure you're part of the journey. Subscribe to Beyond Extinction, where science meets storytelling and every lost world roars back to life. In the heart of ancient Cappadocia, Turkey, long before its fairy chimney cliffs and cave homes, a lone rhino met an end so violent it baked its skull into stone. When scientists unearthed the fossil in 2012, its bones were warped, teeth blistered, and the skull surface looked as though it had been sandblasted by heat. Tests revealed the temperature it endured exceeded 400 degrees Celsius, hot enough to carbonize flesh in seconds. This wasn't decay, it was cremation. Volcanic ash had swept across the plains nine million years ago, moving faster than a jetliner, smothering everything in its path. The blast hit with such force that the rhino's body was torn apart, its skull sealed in a shell of ash, a prehistoric Pompeii. According to a study by the University of Bonn, this pyroclastic flow would have traveled at more than 700 kilometers per hour. Even if the rhino had sensed the eruption, there was no escape. Within a single heartbeat, life became fossil. And when we look at that skull today, glazed and cracked, we're staring at a moment so hot it erased itself, yet somehow survived in stone. Germany, 45 million years ago. In what was once a lush swamp, hundreds of frogs gathered in the shallow water and never left. Their fossils are perfect, skeletons intact, limbs gracefully folded, no sign of predators, no trauma, no disease. For decades, scientists were baffled. Then, modern biology offered a clue. During intense mating seasons, some frog species drown from exhaustion or get trapped beneath males piling on in frenzied competition. Researchers at the Royal Society found that up to 30% of females in dense breeding swarms die this way each year. And so, the prehistoric mystery suddenly made sense. These frogs didn't die fleeing a predator or fighting a drought. They died mid-embrace. Their final moments were acts of instinct not violence. It's strangely poetic, creatures driven by the urge to create life, only to be consumed by it. But the tragedy doesn't end there. Today, frogs are vanishing faster than any other vertebrate on Earth. The IUCN warns that over 40% of species are threatened, not by passion this time, but by a fungus spread through human hands. From lust to extinction, separated by 45 million years, joined by the same fragility. Ecuador's tank Loma site looks peaceful today, a grassy hillside under a bright Andean sky. But beneath it lies one of prehistory's strangest mass graves. Tens of thousands of bones, all from giant ground sloths, Eremotherium lorillardi, relatives of modern tree sloths but weighing over four and a half tons each. At first, scientists assumed the cause was familiar, a tar pit, like the La Brea beds of California. But the chemistry of the soil told another story. The tar wasn't bitumen at all. It was organic sludge, layer upon layer of decayed plants and excrement. 
Radiocarbon tests dated their deaths to roughly 23,000 years ago, a time of drought. With water sources drying, herds crowded into shrinking pools to drink and defecate, turning them into toxic pits. Bacteria multiplied. Parasites bloomed. The water darkened with ammonia and methane. Eventually, the sloths began dying. Not from predators, but from infection, poisoning, and thirst. They had built their own grave, one dung pile at a time. A 1970s study in Tanzania described the same grim pattern among hippos. 140 animals dead in weeks, victims of their own waste during drought. Nature repeats its mistakes across continents, across millennia. What Tank Loma preserves isn't just a mass death, it's a warning. Even giants can fall when their refuge becomes their poison. Sixty-six million years ago, in what is now North Dakota, the world was ending. An asteroid had just struck the Yucatan Peninsula, unleashing a chain of destruction that circled the planet. At the Tanis site, the only known deposit preserving creatures killed within hours of impact. Fossils lie frozen mid-catastrophe. Among them, a freshwater turtle, skewered clean through by a tree trunk. Sediment analysis published in PNAS shows shards of glassy microtectites fused into nearby fish gills, molten debris that fell like fiery hail. The blast waves and earthquakes tossed trees like matchsticks. One trunk pierced the turtle's shell, nailing it to the riverbed as torrents of mud and ash buried everything alive. The energy released by that asteroid equaled 100 trillion tons of TNT, 10 billion Hiroshima bombs. Even 3,000 kilometers away, at Tanis, shockwaves created waves over 100 meters tall. Fish died inhaling molten glass. Ant nests filled with dust from the heavens. And one turtle became the most unlucky victim of the most catastrophic second in Earth's history. Today, its skeleton rests locked inside a slab of sandstone. A silent witness to the day the dinosaurs died. Proof that even in extinction, some deaths stand out for their sheer absurdity. In Ethiopia's A Far Triangle lies a patch of ground no larger than a living room, yet it holds the remains of an entire prehistoric family. 17 individuals, adults, adolescents, and children, all belonging to Australopithecus afarensis, the same species as the famous Lucy. Their discovery site is known simply as AL-333, or more poetically, the first family. What makes them extraordinary isn't just their number, but the mystery of how they all died together. The sediments show no flood debris, no volcanic ash, no cave collapse. For decades, Paleontologists debated the cause, and every answer only deepened the question. One theory blames predators. Saber-toothed cats like Homotherium may have ambushed them, killing far more than they could eat. Finger and toe bones, the smallest and easiest to swallow, are missing, lending weight to that theory. But another school believes something quieter and crueler occurred, a mass poisoning perhaps from tainted food or contaminated water. A 2016 Nature Geoscience study ruled out flooding, but confirmed that all the bodies were deposited in a single event. It wasn't a slow extinction. It was one dreadful afternoon. And so, in a desert once alive with trees and rivers, a family fell together, their story preserved not in words, but in bone. If you were standing at that dig site today, uncovering these remains, what would you want to know first? Who they were, or how they died? Tell me in the comments, because the next story shows just how creative nature can be when it decides the end. Some deaths are so bizarre they seem like satire. 
In the limestone beds of Brazil, scientists uncovered a pterosaur named Ludodactylus, wingspan nearly three meters, with something wedged in its jaw. Not a bone, not a fish, a yucca leaf. The leaf had impaled the creature straight through its mouth, locking the jaws open and leaving it unable to eat or drink. Microscopic scans showed the wound began to heal before infection set in, proof that it suffered for days before dying. This wasn't a gentle glide into prehistory. It was a mid-air accident. Researchers believe the pterosaur struck a yucca plant while swooping low for prey, the sharp leaves acting like natural bayonets. And there's irony in that name. Yucca filamentosa is still called Adam's Needle, or the Spanish Bayonet. Even today, hundreds of gardening injuries each year come from its spear-tipped leaves. In life, Ludodactylus ruled the skies. In death, it was defeated by a plant, the only known fossil in history to show an animal literally killed by vegetation. Evolution rewards adaptability. But sometimes, all it takes is one leaf in the wrong place to erase a species from the sky. Germany's Posidonia Shale is a time capsule of Jurassic seas, dark stone packed with the ghosts of marine life. Among them lies one of the strangest fossils ever discovered, a fish caught mid-death, a spear-shaped squid lodged deep in its throat. The fish was Tharsis, a sleek predator barely 20 centimeters long. Its victim, a belemnite, an extinct cephalopod related to modern squid, already dead when the encounter occurred. But as gases inside the belemnite's shell built up, it floated upward like a buoyant harpoon. The fish struck, tried to swallow it, and the rigid shell slid straight through the gills. Death came slowly. Suffocation, panic, stillness, and then fossilization. Paleontologists have now found several fossils in exactly the same position. A 2024 geology letters analysis concluded the squid were indeed lifeless when swallowed, floating traps disguised as food. It's the prehistoric version of swallowing a fishing lure. Even today, seabirds and pelicans die choking on plastic and hooks. The tools change, but the story doesn't. In the end, it's always curiosity, not predators, that kills the most. Seventy thousand years ago, in what's now Missouri, a herd of mastodons lumbered across a plain pocked with shallow lakes. What looked like another watering hole was, in truth, a death trap. The ground collapsed beneath them, revealing a karst sinkhole filled with slick clay and stagnant water. The first mastodons sank. Others followed, trumpeting in confusion, until the pit became a pit of thrashing giants. Within days, the mud sealed over their bodies. When scientists excavated the site, they found their bones still arranged in the poses of panic. Tusks crossed, ribs arched, skulls tilted upward as if gasping. Geochemical testing revealed elevated methane and sulfur levels, suggesting toxic gases rose from below just before the collapse, turning the trap into a lethal mix of suffocation and drowning. A 2021 Smithsonian Paleo report described it as a perfect natural sarcophagus. Every fossil there, from bone fragments to preserved hair, tells of a quiet, sinking apocalypse. It's easy to think extinction comes in fire or ice. Sometimes, it comes from a single misplaced step. In the blazing deserts of Morocco's Kim Kim beds, paleontologists uncovered a fossil that looked ordinary at first the remains of a prehistoric crocodile. But a closer scan told a crueler story. The bones of its lower jaw had fused together, warped by infection. CT imaging, published in PLOS-1 in 2022, revealed osteomyelitis, a bone disease that sealed the jaw shut from the inside. Trapped by its own armor, the animal could no longer open its mouth to feed or drink. For weeks, it must have stalked the shoreline, starving within reach of the water it once ruled. Predator turned prisoner, victim not of nature's wrath, but of its own design. Its fossil is both grotesque and poetic, 
a body built for domination undone by the very structure that made it strong. Even in prehistory, survival wasn't a guarantee of perfection. It was a gamble that the next mutation wouldn't be the one that locked the door. From rhinos baked alive in firestorms to sloths drowning in their own refuge. From pterosaurs defeated by plants to fish undone by a single bad meal. The fossil record proves that nature's endings are as strange as they are merciless. These nine deaths remind us that evolution doesn't just reward strength or intelligence. It rewards luck. Every survivor, from the smallest insect to us, is here because chance looked our way this time. So the next time you think of extinction, remember, not every vanishing ends in cataclysm. Some end in silence, in irony, in absurdity. And yet each one left a trace, a clue, a warning written in stone. If you want to journey deeper into those forgotten ages where monsters ruled the seas, predators vanished in fire and ice and every fossil hides a story waiting to breathe again. Subscribe to Beyond Extinction, because here, science meets storytelling, and the lost worlds never stay silent for long.